DJ? <laughs> Do you like our background? <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. I don't hate not it. A, it's, no, you, it's not a bad night on the carpet tonight. This, not a bad night. This is a crazy night, guys. Thank you. I mean, for, I mean, for you, my for, goodness. For everyone involved. I mean, this is a project that has been 10 years in the making. Right. And right. the actors just got tacked on at the end, you know? I, we're not that important. But to be a part of something as beautiful as this, with so much love... <sighs> I wouldn't say you're not important. You are making these real life characters, I guess, absolutely, if you were soldiers, absolutely. come alive. We, we are a part of this really beautiful process called filmmaking. Yes. And we're all honored to be a piece of the craft, you know? That's, right, right. But that's it. Like, this is a story that, as Miko would say, deserves to be told. Of course. Uh, and I'm honored to know that, like, the soldiers involved that are still around to see it will be able to see it. And I'm honored that the family members of the soldiers who passed away uh, can watch it. We hope that this becomes an uh, outlet for healing for a lot of people. Because often, you know, soldiers, wives, sister, family members, kids uh, realize that when they're their family members come back they're not the same and often that happens because well obviously because of so much that went down but also because they can't talk about it because it's not easy and sometimes people feel like there's weakness in showing that emotion and what we learned through the show is that a real soldier is the everyman is the everyday person who happens to be a soldier where race ethnicity culture economic background doesn't matter because we all bleed green in something like this you know and it, it, it'll provide a, a level of closure I think that's what you're touching on that's what it is it's, it's a cathartic it's an opportunity for healing for people to say oh my father my brother couldn't talk about this but now maybe a little bit I understand right and because of that I can get closer to them again you know and I think there's something to say about that I mean like you said you were mentioning that you know oh, we're not we're not the stars but you are because these soldiers may not be able to talk about it and you're bringing it to life for everyone to see and I mean what talk about that what was that like preparing for that role well I appreciate you for saying that first of all thank you but um, you can't really be these people they are way cooler than us and more than likely a lot stronger you know because I haven't gone through anything like this but I can attempt to talk to I played Lieutenant Shane Aguero by the way who was the uh, first lieutenant uh, and leader of Red Platoon when they got held under the ambush you can attempt to talk to the people who love them and the soldiers that sit by their side and help protect them and ask well what were they like and uh, I don't know if you guys interviewed Eric Brickwin yet we did. Uh, we sure did. He's amazing. And Eric told me when I asked, he said, well, Shane's hard to figure out. But if I had to say something, I'd say that he's like everyone's favorite younger brother and a break glass in case of war kind of guy. And how do you embody right. that dichotomy? Right. That's right. a fascinating thing. But what it says to us is that a real soldier isn't the stereotype mm -hmm. of a man. He is the comic book geek that sits in his basement playing video games who also happens to be a soldier and who happens to be damn good at it. Um, and attempting to bring Shane to life on the screen has been one of the greatest honors of my life. Well, thank you for talking about it tonight. Enjoy. So I know I'm sure you've seen some of the, the some of the footage already. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to yeah. watch, but it's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you for coming. Thank Appreciate you. it. You're lovely. Pleasure. Thank you.